Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem find eventual safe states. We're given a directed graph of n nodes where each node is labeled between 0 and n minus 1. Now we're actually given the graph as a two-dimensional array. So basically graph at index i will represent all the neighbors of the ith node. So for example, if i equals zero, then we're getting all the neighbors of the zeroth node. So essentially graph at index i is a list. But remember that the edges are directed. So what this means is, uh, let's take a look at the first example below. At index zero, we can see that this is the sublist that we have. One and two means that from the zeroth node, there is an edge going outward from zero to the first node and an edge going outward to the second node. Similarly, the next one is two and three. That means there's two edges going out from this node to two and to three. We're also told that a terminal node is a node that does not have any outgoing edges. So six, of course, is a terminal node. There's no outgoing edges. Five is also a terminal node. There are incoming edges to five, but there are no outgoing edges. Same as four. It's also a terminal node. The rest of these are not terminal nodes. You can see three has an edge going out, two has an edge going out, and you know the rest as well. But we're not so interested in terminal nodes. We're actually more interested in safe nodes. And a safe node is defined as a node that if you took every possible path from uh, this node, every outgoing edge, and then just kept going, eventually all of the paths would lead to terminal nodes. Now, if you're clever, what you're going to realize is that what all that really means is that there's no cycles in the graph. Because think about it. What if we didn't reach a terminal node? How could that be possible? Well, let's look at zero. From zero, we can go to one. From one, we can go to three. From three, we end up back at zero. So, it doesn't even matter what the other paths from zero are because we found one path that will never lead to a terminal node. But just to take a look, let's see what would have happened if we took a different path. Suppose we got to one and instead of going to three, let's say we went to two. Then two only has one other outgoing edge, which leads us to five. 5 is a terminal node. So we did find one path from 0 that will lead to a terminal node, but that doesn't mean 0 is a safe node because one of the paths we saw earlier would lead to a cycle. So 0 is not a safe node. But doing all of that, did you notice by trying to figure out whether or not 0 is a safe node, we found out a few other things. We found out that 1 is also not a safe node because one was a part of the original cycle that was from zero to one to three back to zero. So it was also part of the cycle. So one is also not a safe node. And we also found that two is a safe node because we went through all possible outgoing paths from two. It only took us to five and then we couldn't do anything else. So two is a safe node. All the paths from two lead to a terminal node. Also, of course, we found out that five is a safe node because it is a terminal node. Why this is important is because we won't have to do a lot of repeated work because by asking the question whether or not zero is a safe node, we found out that a bunch of nodes are or aren't safe nodes and we won't now have to revisit them. This means we can do this algorithm in big O in big O of let's say E plus V time, this is kind of a standard way to write it. What this means is the time complexity will be the total number of edges in the graph plus the total number of vertices or nodes in the graph because we're gonna do this recursively with a depth first search algorithm. I mean, how many ways are there to traverse a graph? Usually DFS is the standard way, so that's what we're gonna do. And using the reasoning that I talked about earlier, we won't have to ever revisit a node or revisit an edge. So that's why this will be the time complexity. 
And that's gonna be about as good as you can get for this problem. Before we code it up, let me just show you a couple techniques we're gonna use to achieve this time complexity. So we're gonna use a hash map to map each node to the status of whether it is a safe node or not. And actually, I don't think I even mentioned what we're gonna return in this problem is gonna be basically for every single node, we wanna know if it is safe or not. And we wanna return that in ascending order. That's pretty straightforward. It just means for every node that we have here, it's going to be mapped to an array. Basically, we just wanna return a list of all of the safe nodes. So if we can find out whether a node is safe or not, then we will go ahead and add it to the output. So since we wanna return it in ascending order though, we should probably go in ascending order. We should ask is zero safe or not? Is one safe or not, et cetera, et cetera. We'll build that mapping and at the same time, we will build our output array. But let me show you why this hash map is gonna be important to make this solution efficient. So first we're gonna have a for loop going through zero through six. We're gonna start at the first one. And just like I showed earlier, we're gonna do a DFS on this. So we're gonna go to one of the outgoing nodes. We get to one. Then from one, we're gonna go to another outgoing node. We're gonna get to two. And then from two, we're gonna go to the only outgoing node we can get to, which is five. Now we can't go anywhere else. So what we determined is that five is a safe node. So to remember that, let's go ahead and add that to our hash map. So for five, we're gonna put true, it is safe. And then recursively, we're gonna end up getting back to two. And what we're gonna say is, well, all of the neighbors of two which only includes five, all of its neighbors were safe. So that must mean that two is also a safe node. So we're gonna add that to the hash map as well. Two is a safe node. And then we're gonna pop back to one. One though, we haven't visited all of its neighbors yet. Now we're gonna go to three, and then from three, it only has one neighbor, we're gonna go back to zero. At this point, we're going to get stuck in an infinite loop. So there's multiple ways to get around this. And what I'm gonna do actually is, as we first visited zero, and then we visited one and two, et cetera, et cetera, what we're gonna first assume is those nodes are not safe nodes. So initially, we're gonna add zero and one to uh, the hash map and we're gonna say false, that they are not safe. We're not 100% sure yet, but the reason we're doing this is if hypothetically we get to three, then we add three and say it's also false. And then we're going to, from three, get back to one of the original nodes that was on the same path. And we're gonna know we got to one of the original nodes because in the hash map, the value false is going to be there. So once we get to zero, we know we've detected a cycle because zero is already in the hash map as false. So at this point, we would return because we determined that three is not a safe node, one is not a safe node, and zero is not a safe node. So at this point, we would continue our for loop. We have already determined the status of zero, then we'd get to one. Well, if you look at our hash map, we already determined that status as well. So we don't have to do, we don't have to repeat all that work. We did the same for two, we did the same for three. We didn't do four yet, it's not in our hash map. So let's do a DFS from four. Okay, we're gonna initially add this as a false because if for some reason, you know, along this loop, we ended up back at four, then we would be able to detect that cycle. But what we're gonna find is that from four, we get to five. We already know that five is a safe node. So therefore all the neighbors of four are safe nodes. That must mean that four is also a safe node. So we're gonna pop back to four and we're gonna take that false value that we had, erase it and overwrite it with a true. And then we're gonna continue our for loop. We know that we just did four, we're, we already did five, it's already in the hash map. Now it's time to do six, which is the simplest case. It doesn't even have any outgoing edges, therefore it is a safe node. So you can see that we have the status of each of these. It would be easy to convert this to a list like this one. It's pretty easy to get the result. You can see two, 
four, five, six are all safe nodes. That's exactly what they had in the solution as well. So now let's code it up. Okay, so now let's code it up. The first thing I'm gonna do is just get the length of the graph because we know we're gonna have to iterate through zero to n minus one. So getting the length is pretty straightforward. We're gonna have our hash map, of course. We're gonna call it safe. And then we know eventually what we're gonna do is a for loop. We're gonna go through every node in range n. If this node is a safe node, which we're gonna determine from our DFS by passing in the ith node. We haven't written our DFS yet, but if it is a safe node, that's what our DFS is gonna return. Is it a safe node? If it is, well, we're gonna have our result. If i is a safe node, we're gonna add it to the result. You can see that this, of course, is gonna build it in ascending order because we're iterating through the nodes in ascending order. So we don't have to worry about that. After we've built it, we're gonna go ahead and return it. So that's pretty straightforward. Now, the only thing left is to actually write the DFS. I usually like to write recursive functions inside of the outer function because then we don't have to pass in every parameter. We don't have to pass in safe or the graph, we only have to pass in i, which is the node itself. So I'm gonna have i be a variable. To eliminate repeated work, what we're gonna immediately ask is if i is in safe, that means we have determined whether it's a safe node or not. So let's just return that itself. Is i a safe node or not? We know that's stored in our safe hash map. But if we don't know, first we're gonna assume that it is not a safe node because then we can detect cycles. Then we're going to go through every single neighbor. We can get the neighbors pretty easily because remember that was an input parameter. We can get every neighbor of i by just taking a look at the graph. Now we wanna know is the neighbor a safe graph or not? So let's pass the neighbor into DFS. So there's two cases. One, it's not a safe node. If this, if one of its neighbors is not a safe node, then that must mean that I is also not a safe node. So in that case, we can just immediately return the value that we assumed, which was initially false. So then we'll immediately return false. To make it even more clear, I'll literally you know, write it. But if it is a safe node, that doesn't really change much because we still have to go through every neighbor and confirm that every neighbor is a safe node. If every neighbor is a safe node, then this return statement will never execute. Then we'll break out of the for loop. And once we've done that, we know that this is a safe node. So we can go ahead and write that. We can assign it to be safe and then immediately return true. I don't know what's more clear. I think it'd probably be more clear if I returned the safe value itself in both cases. So I'll do that. But if you wanna write it this way, feel free to you know explicitly write the false and trues. But that pretty much is the entire code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's very efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon if you'd like to further support the channel. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.